Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone So today we are going to continue with uh, the next subtopic in the PLC programming uh, Still in chapter 3 So the subtopics that we are going to learn today is the majority circuit Unlatch and latch uh, and also interlocking So uh, let me first introduce you the majority circuit in the majority circuit, there are situations when the PLC must make a decision making based on the result of the majority inputs. For example, assuming that a PLC is monitoring five tanks of liquid and must give a warning to the operator when three of them are empty. It doesn't matter which tanks are empty as long as it is three of the five tanks are empty. So in this case, there are, might be 10 possible or maybe more than 10 possibles. Uh, with the combination of the inputs uh, that can give the results of uh, the empty tanks, which empty tanks. So assuming that the inputs uh, of the tanks are labeled with A, B, C, D, and E, and then when an input from a tank is on, so it is indicating that the tank is empty. It doesn't matter either A, B, C, or B, C, D, okay, or any other combinations. So, in this case, uh, to determine the majority inputs of this uh, program, first of all, we need to find all the possible combinations of three empty tanks out of five by constructing a binary table or a truth table of this all possible five bits number. Okay, beginning with 0, 0, 0, 0 and ending with 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1. Okay, so by assigning each of these uh, five columns to one of the tanks uh, and another column is the sum of the one in each row. So after that, we need to find every row uh, which has sum of three, meaning that three tanks are full, or, sorry, three tanks are empty. And then we need to uh, write the Boolean expression from this combination uh, of that row. Okay, so I will show you the example. Okay, so for example, in this uh, solution, okay, we have five tanks A, B, C, D, E. So in order to make it easy, I, I divide uh, the tanks into A, B, and C, D, E, which A, B meaning that two bits, okay, and C, D, E, it holds three bits. So with the combination of the bits, it's going to have uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 until 1, 1, 1, 1. So it, when three tanks are uh, empty, so the result output here will be 1, otherwise it will be stated 0. So for example, uh, at this point, okay, at this point here, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1, so meaning that there is a 1 uh, output because 3 tanks are empty in this case. Okay, and then you state all the inputs, okay, and then uh, from this truth table, we can conclude that uh, with the yellow color, there are 3 combinations of uh, Tanks, okay, that is uh, empty, that, that, that are empty, and then the green one is uh, uh, four combinations of four empty tanks and five if five combinations of five empty tanks. From here, uh, we can come out with the uh, Boolean expression, okay, so it has probably 16 combination here, okay, that give result one. Either it is uh, a three combination of three tanks, a combination of four or five tanks that are empty. So from this uh, combination, we will come with the Boolean expression. Okay, and then from this uh, raw Boolean expression, you can do a Boolean, uh, Boolean simplification. And after that, you can draw the simplified Boolean logic and you transfer that Boolean logic into the ledger, uh, ledger logic. Okay, so this is uh, how uh, we are going to program the PLC based on the majority inputs of uh, this uh, circuit. So basically, by finding uh, the combination from the truth table, it is easy for us to determine which uh, combinations are useful to determine the output of the program. Now, the repetitive output in PLC ladder logic diagram. So from this uh, ladder logic diagram, Will the output Q1 be activated when you press 1 and 2 switch, 3 and 4 switch, or 5 and 6 switch? If you press 1 and 2 switch, you assume that Q1 will be on. But unfortunately, the output of Q1 will be 0. 
Same goes when you push 1, 3 and 4 button and then you expect Q1 will be turned on. But unfortunately, Q1 are still off due to the state of 5 and 6. So Q1 will be only on when switch 5 and switch 6 are to turn on. However, in PLC, a repetitive output is prohibited in the ladder logic diagram. You cannot put uh, the same output in any rungs. The output must be registered once in the PLC ladder logic diagram. However, if you are using the same output more than once in the program, you can solve it by using a memory. So memory by definition is an intermediate result of the binary operations and it is normally uh, stated as a flex of variables in the PLC ladder logic diagram. So you can use a memory to solve the multiple output or the repetitive output in the PLC. Through this uh, ladder logic diagram, you can turn on M1 or M2 or M3 based on your uh, logic combinations and then the Q1 will be um, turned on or responded to the state of each memory. So in a ladder logic diagram, normally if we have a combination of a logic that will turn on the same output, we can use it as a parallel input combination to that output. Okay, so any rung that is true, the combinations are true, and then it will turn on the Q1. Okay. So, uh, this one can be written uh, by par parallel all the circuits uh, at once, and then you connect it to the one output only. Because you cannot repeat the same output in the ladder logic diagram. But if you want to repeat the same output in the ladder logic diagram, you can use memory. Okay? Instead of uh, connecting it directly to the output, you can connect it to a flag or a memory here. Okay, so I replace the output with the memory. Okay, whichever uh, memory uh, with the true combination, it will turn on the Q1. So if you see uh, from this example, okay, if memory 1 is true and then Q1 will be turned on. So this technique is useful when you have a larger uh, program or a larger logic combination. Alright, so you can repeat the output uh, in any rung of your program as long as you can replace it by using a memory. So the output uh, of uh, the final output of the intended uh, coil or output coil will be respond to the state of the memory. Okay, so this is useful when you have a large program. Okay, now uh, we move to latching function. So what is latching function? So latch and unlatch output is used to lock the output on. Okay, so when you turn on uh, the on button, you want uh, the output to be turned on, even though when you uh, release the button. So it is very useful in the PLC, uh, in the real implementation of PLC in automation, okay, because uh, most of the switch button uh, do not have the latching uh, feature on that button. Okay, that's why we have to create a latch circuit uh, to 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 save the state of the 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 on state of that button, and so that it will uh, keep the machine to be run. When the latch output is energized, the output will be turned on indefinitely, even when the output call is de-energized. So in this case, the output can only be turned off when unlatch call is energized. Okay, so this is an uh, example of PLC circuit with the latch uh, process. So you have a button forward here. Okay, so when you press the forward button, so the output will be turned on. And then you latch this on state of this output to the input and become its input. So when you release the forward button, it will keep 
turn on. However, this circuit has some problem when you press the button, the motor will never stop. I will show you uh, in the simulation. In this simulation, the input forward of this circuit is latched by using its output. So I will run the simulation. So if you press the forward switch, okay, it will turn on Q1. And then when you release it, Q1 is, is keep turn on. Okay, even though you have released the forward button. If you turn on I3, Q2 is not turned on because the state at Q1 is not released. Okay, because uh, this uh, Q2 will be turned on if Q1 is released. So this is uh, the problem with this circuit. It can latch the input. Okay, the output uh, will be turned on uh, continuously, but it will keep running without stopping. And that is why we need to put a stop button at this circuit. So when the stop button is pressed, it will stop the function at this rung. And then uh, when you want to turn on uh, another motor, uh, as the stop button has been uh, pushed, so another state of another motor, for example, in this case, if you, if you uh, turn on forward, Okay, so the motor uh, will be running forward. Okay, and then if you want to make the motor in a reverse uh, function, so you have to stop uh, motor 1 first. Okay, when motor 1 is stopped, only then uh, motor 2 can be run. So I will, st uh, I will show you the simulation. In this simulation, we have added a stop button here. So, when you push the forward button, the output of Q1 or motor 1 will be turned on. Okay, and then when you raise the forward button, it will be keep turning on because of this latching. Okay, you latch the output state here and it becomes its input. Okay, even though you have uh, released the button forward, it will keep running. Now, you are going to stop this motor because you want to have a uh, reverse function. Because if even if you uh, push the reverse uh, button, okay, motor 2 will not uh, turn on because the process of motor 1 is not finished. And therefore, we push the stop button first. So the stop button will stop the motor 1. Okay, and then when we have pushed the stop button, we push the reverse button. And then the second round, which is motor 2, will be turned on. And therefore, with the latch uh, circuit here, okay, where you latch, meaning that you uh, keep the state of the output to become its input. Okay, and then when you release uh, the reverse button, the process is still running. Okay, to stop this motor from keep running, you have to press the stop button. That's why in unlatch process, okay, when you latch the output uh, of a certain process, you must put a stop button in this circuit to stop that process. Now, we move to the interlocking function. Interlock is a feature that makes the state of two mechanisms or functions mutually dependent. It may be used to prevent undesired states in a finite state machine and may consist of electrical, electronic or mechanical devices or system. So now, in the case of PLC, interlocks are conditions that must be true in, a, in order for a particular output to be allowed to be energized. So I will show you what is interlock function in PLC from the simulation. This is interlocking function. The interlocking function here is actually uh, based on the stop and start button here. Okay, so the state of the stop and start button is stored in the memory. So from this memory, it will turn on the next rung. Okay, it will be the first uh, logic that can turn on the next rung. So if you uh, start the circuit, okay, you interlock the circuit. Okay, at this memory. So each of the rung will start to energize the current here. I mean the, the, the circuit here. So once uh, the 
combination logic here are true with the combination of M1 from the start button and therefore the motor can be started. So if you put a stop button here, it will stop all the operation because M1 is depending on the stop and start at the first rung. So I will show you the simulation. So now the stop button is not pushed. Okay, I start, I push the start button. So when I, when I push the start button, the flag of the memory one is true. So it will uh, keep this flag status at each uh, circuit that it, it, it uh, at each circuit that M1 is uh, located. So if I turn on the forward button, the motor forward will be turned on. And then when I push the reverse button, okay, motor reverse is not turned on because the forward button is still on. Okay, in order for reverse motor to be turned on, the forward button must be released. So when I release the forward button, okay, and then motor reverse will be turned on as long as memory one is still in the on state. Okay, because the system is still running. Okay, the start button is still running. Okay, so when I push the stop button, it will immediately shut the whole operation. Okay, so this is the interlocking system. Actually, in the latching circuit, there is an interlocking. The interlocking here is the stop button here. But... In a real implementation, normally, we put a stop and start button in one circuit to energize and de-energize the whole circuit. So hopefully, uh, you can differentiate between latching and interlocking. So I'll see you again in the class. Uh, we are going to discuss on the examples and then hopefully you ha uh, you are going to have a better understanding on the majority circuit, repetitive output using memory, latching, okay, and interlocking. So I'll see you again.